Hello, this is Hawker the Bean, and today we are going to be reading five backrooms entities because the backrooms level I was planning to read today is gone. I don't know what happened to it. I went onto the levels list, it's just now. I went through with the levels. I went to level 114 and I looked for 1.114.1, 1. 1. and the Sweet Nightmares is just gone. It disappeared, and I have no clue how. So instead, we have five entities today. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into this, and I'm really sorry about the level. Starting with entity number 41. Yes, we're starting just from where we you were a lot last time we did ed entities, which was 40. Habitats, level 57, studio. This studio at large is not infinite. There is an exit to level 21 that she will show to you. The layout of the room changes often. However, the items in the, it remain constant. I guess we will, I'd be reading about level 57 in the future. Anyway. Description. The artist is a teenage girl who is of average height with brown hair and eyes that have an indeterminable color. They seem to vary from blue to hazel to green. She wears purple glasses and pajamas. When asked about this, she replies with, Why would I wear real clothes all the time when I don't have to? When asked about her name, she says that she doesn't know and that doesn't matter. She acts very eccentric and happy at times, and especially appreciates visitors to her exhibit. She doesn't ever leave her studio unless she's hanging a picture up, and she only paints what she feels like. She has no knowledge of the back rooms and appears to forget about them when told. Do's and don'ts. Do approach and talk in a mature manner. Compliment her artwork. She'll quickly take a liking to you. Ask for a way out. She'll gladly help. Don't take pictures of her or her art without permission. Don't talk down to her. Don't tell her about the back rooms. Don't tell her she's like other girls. By abiding by these do's and don'ts, you guarantee you guarantee asylum, a safe way out, and supplies she's more than willing to give, such as almond water and food, all of which she claims that she gets from some random room with a bunch of snacks. Whether or not she is referring to level 6.5 is unknown. By failing to follow this advice, one is instantly teleported out of the studio and the door becomes locked. Effectively blocking off the only predictable and safe method of exit. So, for the sake of everyone who comes to this level, be respectful to the artists. Now we have NC number 42. The Memory Worm. Habitats is various... It's two for it. Oh, these ones. Description. The memory worm is a colossal creature. Bearing great similarity to the front room species. Arena Cola Marina. The worm exhibits a wide variety of metaphysical abilities, which it uses mainly for put ursing its prey. The enemy's reality warping abilities are highly potent, often causing wanderers near the worm to report intense and unnatural feelings of comfort or nostalgia, even by the standards of the back rooms. This passive effect that the worm exudes likely exists to pacify its potential prey, in order to make consumption easier. The mouth of the worm opens to reveal a vortex of razor sharp teeth that lead endlessly down on its that seem to lead endlessly get down its gullet. Victims caught in the worm's spell are almost always lured in and quickly devoured. Biology Accounts of the memory worm of its biology vary from telling to telling. 
As sightings of this creature are considered extremely rare, and survival of encounters are rarer still. The worm is always described as to be a mammoth of an entity, with an estimated size in between 300 to 600 meters in length. While of impressive size, it typically has at least three quarters of its body buried underground at any given point. It is thought to use its actual length for leverage while chasing its prey. With a girth of approximately 5 meters, its size is overall comparable to an extremely long subway or passenger train. The exterior of the entity is composed of a dense yet flexible layer of it of hardened skin, which is a disturbingly human shade of pink, unlike the normal off-brown color of regular worms. It is thought to be dry in texture, with visible cracks on its surface, and provides the creature with what could be compared to natural armor. Conventionally, a wep conventional weaponry has been proven to be ineffective in piercing this hardened skin and dealing any meaningful damage, making combat with the entity extremely difficult. In addition, the worm's exterior layer has been known to glitch or stutter when its full body is in motion which is assumed to be the combined effect of its titanic size and extremely low usability in local reality. The mouth of the memory worm is most commonly described as a gaping maw, filled with razor-sharp teeth that make a spiral shape down its gullet. It has been observed that these teeth have the ability to rotate inside of its mouth, allowing it to tear through to tear through prey like a chainsaw. Each tooth is about 16 inches in length and extremely dense. It should also be noted that the memory worm may have the ability to physically alter its bodily appearance. Some rare accounts of survivors describe entity with drastically different features than what is most frequently observed during encounters. For a list of document alterations, see the supplement documents at the bottom of this article. Behavior Heed not the call of the devourer. The beast of the disgrace bears only false truths. A distraction from our meager existence. The lecherous scourge shall not overcome our will. Not with a siren song of nor its unbridled fury. Fear in spiraling the abyss of lustful disorientation. Never shall one unlive to see the day in which we slay the beast, or for that reason alone we must endure. Bethren, even the cruelest of horrors still hold value. Though imperceptible to most, we must perceive the beast's truth. We must learn from it not to dwell or contemplate upon that which is past. For living within our memory shall deprive us of the beauty of the now and the hope of the hereafter. Is there from a book? The memory room is driven by one thing and one thing only. It's eternal hunger. The entity is plagued by an un insatiable starvation. Its vanishment only temporarily subdued by the constant consumption of memories. It has been observed feeding in many ways, frequently either early consumption of memory juice or by swallowing its human and victims whole. However, it also seems to possess an extreme appetite for memory jars. Thankfully, it seems that the memory worm's ability to sense memory jars is quite limited in range, unless the entity is already nearby, activating or opening a jar that is not likely to trigger an attack. This particular craving is so great that it will, will even stop a hunt if it senses any nearby. Currently, this is the only way to reliably learn the memory worm to a given location, or to interrupt one of its rampages. Given the wide availability of memory jars across many circles, wanderers are advised to carry some on their person at all times as a distraction in the unlikely event of a worm attack. See attached file 1A for more information on memory worm's feeding habits. 
Another of the worm's noble characteristics is that it possesses some semblance of sentient will. The entity has been shown to hold grudges against wanderers that harm or escape it, as evidenced by the attached interview. Well... We have to now. <sighs> you already know the alterations. Note, the following alterations of the member worm's physiology are primarily ev evidenced by word of mouth, as the wanderers who have reported these aviations may still have an effect under the member worm's extra normal influence. It is advised to take is advice one take these with a grain of salt. Jacoby reported following its deviations. I'm not saying full names. This is already way too long. Its normal skin was replaced with an inky black exterior. The worm possessed multiple tentacle-like appendages that would translocate themselves across its body at random. Various mouth-like openings with jagged edges were present across its body. Emil reported the following deviations. The worm's maw had morphed into a mammal-like jawbone, and its mouth was capable of opening and closing. The worm's skin appeared to be slick bright. It's red. Yanev reported these deviations. The worm's size was drastically reduced, being able to fit inside of a small room. The worm appeared to be growing a wispy type of hair on its, gra on its back near the front of the head. The worm's skin has was a darker shade, a close to that of an actual worm, opposed to its normal reddish brown. Sarah reported these deviations. The memory worm's body was significantly thinned, and it appeared to be much longer than normal from her point of view, having encountered this creature before in its normal state. All of the worm's teeth were missing, leaving only a gaping hole at the front of its face. Atlas reported these deviations. The memory worm's entire body was, in, was entirely a shade of ear vanta black, seeming to absorb the a light around it to an extent so that it appeared almost two dimensional. A massive glowing white symbol in the shape of the Greek letter Omega was placed directly in the center of its forehead area. Feeding Habits of Entity 42 Unlike most, most members of phylum of an Alita, the memory worm does not need to consume nutrients to, to survive. Instead of consuming in prey for the a purpose of restoring energy, the main purpose of the memory worm's, worm's hunt appears to be a, is to sate a purely psychological hunger. The memory worm prefers to hunt in a slow-paced ambush style, often favoring having its prey come to it, then vice versa similar to that of a Venus flytrap. The NC is kind and hunts off of vibration and sound. <sighs> Considering the esoteric structure of the back rooms, this allows it to take a more unique approach to, appro uh, to take more unique approaches to hunting, as the worm does not need to be in the same area as its prey to sense it. While animalistic, the memory worm is highly intelligent, comparable in intellect to that of a common cephalopod. It possesses great problem-solving capability and, ad and adaptability. If a wanderer or entity is caught up, is caught by the worm in the state, its life essence and memories will be completely drained. A telltale sign that one of its hunting nests is close, close by is a sopping, moldy flesh pile of partially devoured corpses. Fused together by the toxic saliva of the worm. While preferring the aforementioned method of hunting, this by no means implies that the memory worm is incapable or unwilling to hunt prey in a more conventional manner. It is deprived of me memories for an extended period of time. If deprived of memories for an extended period of time, it will enter a state of flight and hunger driven madness using all of its energy to barrel through whatever level it currently inhabits until it hunts down and consumes the victim. Considering its gargantuan size and reality warping abilities, 
Encountering it in this state is extremely dangerous and to be avoided at all costs. This file was as prepared by the EMEG research entity research specialist GUMS. And here we have an interview. The following log is an audiovisual transcript between a Meg agent Jackson Brown and a young one named Avalyn and Dicondo. State your name and occupation for the record, please. Avalyn, Avalyn Dicondo. Is it even possible to have an occupation here? Well, it depends. If you associate with a certain, with a particular group, people often have specific jobs. For example, I could say that I'm a Meg, Meg field agent. Most people just say wanderer, though. Or in that case, I'm Avalyn Dicondo, wanderer. Thank you. On to business. It's come to our attention that you've had an encounter with Entity 42, or the Memory Worm. Is that correct? That's correct. I unfortunately crossed this path a few times in my days here. More than once. Allow me to offer my sympathy for the experiences you had. Thanks, that thing is rather unpleasant. <laughs> oh wow. I, I generated it wrong. She chuckles nervously. What was your first encounter with the worm right? Alan pauses for a moment, letting out a deep breath as she recalls the drawing memory. I was in level 1, traveling to the hub in order to get somewhere a bit safer. I was coming back from meeting an old friend at his house in level... I think that's 11? When I stepped on some uncivil ground and got no clipped into the good old concrete zone. After letting a bit of, of a colorful language for the situation, I ended up walking down a pathway that led me straight into the hallway where the memory worm was hunting. I was, as I was walking, I started getting a very calm feeling of nostalgia. Being here for a while, I was quite accustomed to this type of feeling. You know how whenever you end up in level 0, you get that weird calm, uneasy sensation in your gut? It was like that, but stronger. Thinking nothing of it, I press on, straight into the trap it had set for me. Jackson scribbles a few notes into his spiral-bound notepad. Do you think, think it's possible there was an extra normal effect preventing you from recognizing the a danger? Truth be told, I really don't know. I think of myself as generally observant, so it's possible. However, I could have just been an, idi an idiot. I see. Carry on. After a few more seconds, maybe minutes, I don't really know how long it was, time seemed to flow inconsistently when I was around that thing. Almost like a dream. I was completely out of it when it was happening. But afterwards, the absurdity of it all hit me like a truck. So, let me get this straight. So far, we have artificial nostalgia and time alteration. Yes? Correct. This continued cycle, this cycle continued in intensity so far to the point that I didn't even realize where I was anymore. I had gone from an orderly concrete hallway straight into where that thing was waiting. It's hunting nest, if you will. Can you describe this hunting nest? It was gross. The walls, floor, and ceiling were completely covered and dripping with this thick, gooey, warm, and viscous substance. It was opaque and white. I swear I could see small stringy things inside of it. It looked like clam chowder from hell. <laughs> clam chowder from hell? That's a new one. This material usually shows up in memory worm attacks and has loads of atypical properties that would 
definitely cause the things you experience. Did you happen to get any of it on you by chance? I was standing in a puddle of it. That do it. The memory of warm saliva is one hell of a drug. I noticed I was there. The interviewee chuckles at her own joke. Jackson reciprocates with a small grin. Anyways, carry on. If you could remember how you snapped out of it or escaped, that would be very helpful information. Now that you mention it, there was something that sobered me up aside from being inches away from a vortex of teeth the size of a subway car. By some miracle, a loose pipe of almond water burst above my head and ended up drenching me, sobering me right up. Jackson tilts his head, frowning. Really? That's new. We need to conduct further testing, but this could prove very useful in the long run if it can counteract the, the trance effect. Happy to help in any way I can. Your cooperation is always appreciated. What happened next? Well, the worms definitely seemed to notice I wasn't under its control anymore, and it got pissed. The ground started rumbling, and I wasn't about to stick around and see what happened next. I bolted for my life. I ran the, down the corridors, and the worm chased me through. Luckily, I was in an area with very compact walls, because it seems the worm definitely had a hard time squeezing through to chase after me. It was practically ripping up the concrete as it slithered behind me. Eventually, I came to the entrance of the hub, and I turned around to see its maw slam into the door frame beside me. I'm not being hyperbolic when I said the entire lobby, the tunnel of the hub shook like it was in a tornado. It seems something else was stopping the worm from entering because otherwise, there wasn't a doubt in my mind it would have. Evelyn pauses. Leveled that whole place. <laughs> <laughs> I love her already. Jackson face palms tried to hold in a laugh. That joke was awful. Yeah, says you. It was great. Anything else? You did mention a second encounter with the worm. Was it pretty much the same? No, it was something out of a fever dream. Even in a in comparison to the weirdest stuff in this place. Well, don't let me stop ya. I think that thing holds a grudge it is. After or I escaped in every level I entered, I'd always have to feel that same feeling from the first encounter. I'd always leave after that occurred, but not wanting to repeat a repeat of the first instant. One time I was asleep. I was on some beach level. I can't recall much, much about it, but when I woke up, I felt a rumbling underneath the sand. The water in the distance was frothing, and I could make up so make out something enormous over the horizon. Still trying to shake off the drowsiness, I started walking in across the beach to find somewhere to go head out. After a few minutes, I checked back to the ocean to see the most enormous creature I have witnessed in my entire life. This thing had its entire body but of the wave stretched like an honorary sea serpent. This thing looked like Shrama Angander and what 
One of those sandworms from Dune that had the most angry baby you could possibly imagine. That's quite the analogy. What happened next? Well, I thought I'd always about to become this creature's lunch until two beings stepped out of a spatial tear behind me. One was wearing glasses, a black trench coat, and carrying a scythe. He looked like if they cast a younger Elton John as Neo in The Matrix, and it gave him even more combat gear. More interestingly, his arms were completely covered in bandages. Interesting. Did you manage to catch a name? Not exactly, but the other figure called him Argos. Jackson, Jackson scribbles, down some, scribbles something down in his notebook. The other figure, he was dressed in what looked like the clothes of a medieval knight. Fear scribbling continues. The agent's brows furrowed. I'm curious about Argos and this other figure. 74, 71. All right. We'll have to figure that out another time. Are you okay? You seem confused. You want me to repeat anything? No, it's fine. Just a long day, that's all. Please go on. Alright, anyway, like I was saying, those two individuals came up and started fighting this thing. The one called Argos led me away from the fight and forced clipped me to level 6.1. Before I left, I could see the Knight of the Worm locked in an intense battle. That guy must have been ridiculously strong because the worm's entire body seemed to shake when he was when he struck with his sword. Even so, the worm was keeping up with him. I don't know what happened after as I, I had begun to cliff. Is it all? Yes, the worm hasn't bothered me since, and I still have, have no idea what I experienced. Neither do I. This is way above my pay grade. I thank you for your time, Avalon. Please help yourself to a bite to eat on the way out. Thanks, Agent Jackson. It was a pleasure meeting you. Likewise. Take care, Avalon. The feed cuts here. Addendum. Argos is an entity hunter now? What the hell is going on with this thing? The Red Knight 2? The two of them together? What the fuck? This worm might be a bigger deal than we thought. And those two might be... No, they definitely are going to be future... Or, or video subjects. And I'm very interested. Do's and don'ts. Do you slowly move away from the moment you think you see it. It hunts primarily off of vibration and sound. Pay heed to any strange underground rumblings you hear while in outdoor levels. Use memory jars to distract the worm and make your escape. Keep odd water on your person to prevent becoming entranced. Don't approach memory worm intentionally for any reason. Don't fall for its illusions. Don't linger within a location while experiencing feelings of unnatural nostalgia. Now, Entity 43. Ooh. The Infernal Keepers. Through the fire and flames, we shall serve on. Anyway, this is Entity 43. Draculits. What does that mean? Well, I have no idea. Anyway, description. As you traverse the altered reality of the back rooms, it is rare but not unheard of to spot a draconic sculpture every now and then. 
These sculptures, which I have dubbed Draculates, are feared by those who know of them for their horrific nature. One does not look into their soulless gaze, lest they meet a fiery end. Behavior. No matter which level you find yourself in, it is possible for a Dracula to manifest as close by. Either hidden around a corner, suddenly appearing as a fixture in the, in the environment, or partially obscuring your path. Once it appears, other hostile entities appear to retreat from the area. I have yet to determine if this is a result of the Draculates' properties or just a natural response. Draculates are very rare, vanishing after 5 to 10 minutes, and will not move when observed. But should you view, view it for longer than a minute, your troubles have only just begun. Shortly after, your Dracula will begin to appear ahead of you, staring back. This happens even when you would look elsewhere, no matter how fast. Soon after, another Dracula will appear alongside the first and follow you as well. As the pursuit goes on, more and more will, will appear in the area, surrounding you from all sides. I speculate it that the Draculates may have some way to communicate with one another from different levels. The nature of this communication is poorly understood. While they never attack you in any way, they will never relent in their chase. This lasts until either direct eye contact with at least one Draculate that's made, or you escape to another level. Should you ever lose, lose consciousness during the chase, the Dracula's behavior changes. It closes and the, it encircles you using its wings, talons, and tail to prevent escape. Aside from abrasions and bruising, this restraint will not cause serious harm. The only way to free yourself from its clutches is to close your eyes and avoid meeting its gaze, no matter what. After an hour, the Draculate, alongside any others accompanying it, vanish completely. The Draculates will not plague you any further within the level and after. This also makes a significant drop in hostile entity attacks for the next several weeks. The reason for this effect is unknown. If you were to gaze into a Dracula's eyes for longer than 5 to 10 seconds, they emit a red glow. Soon, a horrid chattering sound will fill the room as smoke bellows from the observed Dracula's maw. Then, in the blink of an eye, it, along with the others, will vanish without a trace. For the first hour afterward, you may seem fine. In truth, you've been plagued by an evil or far worse than any mauling. Over the course of four hours from the encounter, you will experience a terrible sickness that eventually culminates in a gruesome death. I have decided to refer to this horrible curse as Dragon's Fever. Stage 1. The victims feel light eat light lightheaded, experiencing dizziness and dehydration. After 20 to 30 minutes, stage two, the victim develops fever-like symptoms, profuse sweating and extreme paranoia. That's after one hour. Stage three, the victim's body temperature will rise da to dangerously high levels, panting and dehydration. Symptoms are incurable at this stage. Stage four, the victim's chest starts to gl glow with smoke bellows from the mouth. As asthmatic seizures, the victim remains alive and conscious for its entirety. 
three hours. Stage five. Victim begins expelling fire from their mouths as they burn alive from the inside out. Expiration, expiration follows after four hours. I haven't been able to piece together how the Dracolith acquired this ability. Follow standard or er, er, backrooms. It was expiration procedure or by carrying around almond water on your person. Biology. Draculates are animate sculptures of western style dragons made of granite, limestone, or polished marble standing roughly four to six feet tall. Draculates are immune to the effects of weathering or any form of external trauma. They do not appear to need to consume any kind of, of matter, making their predatory behavior perplexing. Draculids usually assume an aggressive or otherwise predatory stance, though resting and idle have been reported as well. I only encountered this event as an entity in person once. Unfortunately, the people accompanying me would not allow me to study it yet further. Most information stems from witness accounts and passive observation of Draculid manifestations. Discovery the context of the discovery of Draculids and spot audio sightings are very rare, and those who encounter these rarely survive. However, I did hear of old texts which seem linked to these entities. To my dismay, I haven't been able to see them myself, but I hope to document them someday. Do you always make sure you are to have almond water on your person when available. Do try to ignore it when possible. Don't look it in the eyes. Don't attempt risky routes which would cause you to fall unconscious. Entity 44. Gossip Beacon. And I think I, I pronounced that wrong. Entity in number 44. Have ads commonly found in level. Level 6 and level 8. Description These entities are to be avoided. They do not and cannot cause physical harm, but can cause psychological harm. Gossip beacons are mineral structures with an LED light embedded within them. Each gossip beacon is fully sentient with individual personality and memories. They are unable to speak verbally and instead rely on, aud and, and instead rely on auditory hallucinations to be key to communicate with wanderers and other entities. They cause psychological distress by pulling memories and thoughts from their victims and repeating them out loud for all nearby to hear. They are also known to criticize their victims rudely. Behaviors Gossip Beacons have varying personalities, each having their own thoughts and experiences. They are fully sentient and have intelligence comparable to humans. Though personalities vary, they are generally cynical and demeaning. When a memory is pulled from a victim's mind, the gossip begins will begin to verbally attack the victim about their actions. Typically by outward, out outwardly expressing the water's deepest thoughts and causing the victim extreme anxiety. The beacons can all use the same memories or all different ones individually. It is highly recommended to leave the area an entity to prevent further stress. Biology Gossip beacons are rectangular or mineral structures with an LED embedded within. These entities range in color but are most commonly red or white. They all appear to have a similar design with star shaped in engines along their sides. They range in height from 20 to 30 centimeters. They are unable to communicate verbally and instead rely on auditory hallucinations to speak. They are immobile but can be easily transported. I mean, these just kind of look like they could be nightlights, honestly. Discovery Gossip beacons are a growing concern within the 
uh, rooms. They are, are appearing at an increasing rate with reports across several levels. They are most, most commonly found in levels with low light or cavernous areas. Transcript of an interview with a gossip beacon found in an abandoned and backpack. Do you have a name? A name? Why would I need a name? The question you should be asking... That's the question you should be asking yourself. I do have a name, but that is not of importance. If you could have a name, what would it be? There was once a wanderer, like yourself. I saw all their whole life flash before on my mind. But one name I'm stuck to me. Jasper. I like that name. Okay, Jasper, what's the first thing you remember? What would I tell you? If this is just a one-way conversation, I do not want to continue. It's not. I still have more, a few more questions to ask you. You miss them, don't you? You miss your old life before you ended up here forever. That is not important right now. You know that you'll never leave this place and it haunts you. Remember when you first arrived in the halls of yellow? The confusion, the guilt, the fear. Every day of your life will be like that from now on. I... I can't do this right now. Leave me alone. It isn't me saying these thoughts. It's yourself. Do's and don'ts. It is generally e e best to avoid gossip beacons. Ignore their commentary. Hearing them is unavoidable, but do not let their criticisms affect you. Do not respond to them. Furthering the conversation can lead to increased stress. Do not take their judgments personally. They mean nothing and aren't meant to bother you. Do not go near them. They remember everything that is pulled from your mind. Hmm. Curious, aren't you? You know, many have wondered, have wondered why we do this. Many have wondered what we do with the memories. To put it simply, you are living a lie. This reality is much more than it seems. You and you managed to discover that for yourself by ending up here. But this is freeing in a way. Your fears and guilt from the past mean nothing here. By acknowledging these pains from the past, from the past, you can start fresh here in your new home forever. Really, going on to the other type of horror that it is present in in, in the back rooms as a whole, which is the whole entire fact that there is no escape. You're stuck there forever. Right, this is Entity 45, I think. Hi, um, hello. Do you guys happen to know the way back to the city? Well, hello. Of course we do. We know all the routes that lead to these forests. That's great, so... We'll tell you while you warm up. Sit down, sit down. Oh, I don't mean to intrude. I just need to eat directions. It's no bother. There is always space for one more. Please join us. Let the fire work its wonders. I... Fine, just a minute. Thank you. What brings you to these woods anyway, boy? Yes, tell us your story. Stories are the only thing that keeps us alive, you know. There's not much to do around here. Oh, right, of course. I was, uh, I just wanted to... I want to have an adventure. I know it sounds silly, but back in the city, all the guys my age had some exciting experiences. An extraordinary encounter with some mysterious entity or something like that. And I, well, I want to have mine. Oh, don't worry, boy. We understand. 
We were all young once, but I was a fool and lost my way. I hurt my knee, and I, I honestly didn't come prepared at all. Ah, boy, no one is born an adventurer. Not even us. We've all failed miserably at one time or another. Well, um, thank you for the reassurance, but I should start out the way back home. Thank you for letting me rest here, really. But you can't leave now. It's too dark. You will get lost. Besides, if stories to impress your friends are what you're looking for, well, these eyes have seen plenty of things. I don't know. I really don't want to bother. Come on, boy. The food is almost ready. Spend the night with us. And by dawn, you will have enough stories for the rest of your life. Can't read. Okay, fine. I'll accept your hospitality. I hope these stories are good. Entity 45, Troop of Vidas. Entity number 45, Habitats Outdoors. Solitude is one of the greatest obstacles a wanderer can face. It is something beyond our control, something that eats us away, little by little, killing the unwary before they even realize. It is, I dare to say, our deepest fear, and that is why it should come as no I was surprised that this damn place we now call home has found a way to take advantage of humanity's inherent need for companionship. An unknown wanderer on Chupavitas. Description NC 45, most commonly known as Chupavitas, are disruptive creatures that manifest as a group grouping of ghostly humanoid figures seated around a bonfire. This, however, is nothing more than an illusion created with the purpose of attracting wanderers who travel alone, all with the intention of consuming them. Everything from the gathered beings to the fire itself is false. <sighs> Although it may not seem so at first glance. The nature of the entity can be revealed by those with above average level of perception as this will allow them to see the small, almost imperceptible flaws in the illusions. The most noble of all details is the fact that the flames do not emit any heat, and in fact seem to absorb the warmth of, all of the wanderers. Instances of NC-45 are typically located on frequently traveled routes or at common resting places, such as the outskirts of bases or in the vicinity of a variety of level entry points. Though it is unknown if they are capable of moving in or if they are anchored to their, their position. The population of ND45 and the numbers of levels they have been inside on seems to have grown over time. It can be found in infesting forests, deserts, and many other outdoor spaces throughout the back rooms. Behaviors NC45 is a passive predator. Luring its target it with a with the promise of a cozy fire, good food, and conversation to pass the time. To complement this, the entity can alter its prey's perception of reality, which allows it to hide its ghostly appearance from approaching wanderers. This is not the only form of deception practiced by the entity. Its humanoid mimics, who seem to have cho been chosen by the entity to look as non-threatening as possible, Act in, in extremely friendly and manipulative ways, trying by all means to keep the victim with them for a long period of time. Uh, 
Under the influence of NCC-45, wanderers are induced to believe that they are in front of a campfire, emitting real heat. But the life force is not slowly being consumed and that the figures seen by the fire are actual humans. While it is said that being under the sphere of influence of the entity makes a person more compliant to obey, it is unknown whether or this is Entity 45's capabilities or whether the phenomenon is just a result of the amiability it feigns. Biology Unlike many other predators of the backrooms, NC-45 feeds on a person's essence, training them until they are completely incorporated into its own. It is a slow process whereby the entity absorbs one's life story. Everything that makes a human being what they are, every memory, every history, will be assimilated and subsequently consumed by NC-45. People who have managed to escape the entity's <sighs> embrace made their way through this process mentioned that chunks of their identity were missing. This resulted in memory gaps, the inability to perform activities requiring a specific skill despite having memories of acquiring said skill, and a constant sense of deja vu, among other symptoms. Once a person has been fully drained, a recreation of the individual based on all the information accumulated by their absorption can be used by the entity to, as bait to attract more wanderers. It is unknown to what extent these creatures maintain an individual level of consciousness, or how much influence the personality of the original person exerts. Most people choose to believe that the original being dies during the process, and that the illusion is merely a puppet molded from the victim's memories and knowledge. Discovery For many years, the Upa Avidas were, were considered mere legends, stories with the purpose of teaching children not to be so trusting with strangers. It was not until the first cameras were introduced in the, to the back rooms that the first images of NC-45 could be captured thus confirming its existence. The first reports of the entity's activity mentioned that its human mimics were barely coherent, being unable to form um, even basic sentences that made sense. This suggests that over time, in regards to more human experiences, the entity has been able to imitate humans more accurately. Another one? We can go on all night if you want. Yes, we have plenty of stories. No, I... I'm not feeling well. You must be tired. I think you should rest. Yes, you walked a long way to get here. You must be exhausted. I think it's my stomach. I... Maybe it was the food? Impossible. We make the best food of all the surrounding levels. Wait, what is that? It's nothing, kid. You should rest now. Come on, lie down here, near the fire. I'm freezing. I'm... I'm shivering. Here, here. Come closer to the fire, you will feel better. What was that? What did you... What did you feed me? You're talking nonsense. Come on, it's time to sleep. This way, this way. So cold. Close your eyes. You'll feel better. You'll see. 
Come on, boy. Just lie back and relax. We're almost done. Sweet dreams. That was five entities from the back rooms. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!